Thank you. <laughs> Stephen Metcalf. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Not surprisingly, uh, the calling of this debate has stimulated somewhat uh, a quantity of interest from my constituents, from my local councils, from the police, the media, um, because as we have heard from my honourable friend, the member for uh, Rayleigh and Wickford, this is a hot topic in South Essex. Indeed, in the run-up to the general election, I wrote to the PM's policy advisor asking that further measures could be included, perhaps in the forthcoming manifesto, because quite frankly, the public are fed up. They are fed up that the same rules do not appear to apply equally to all members of society, whatever their cultural background. And that's what we are talking about, illegal activity on the main perpetrated by travellers. And that's the point. It's not about discrimination. It's not about attacking someone's culture or their way of life or their traditions. This is about all of us playing by the same rules and abiding by the same law, having the law applied to us equitably and all taking responsibility for our actions in the same way. Now I can tell you I've got a sheet here of horror stories of recent incidents which unfortunately I do not have time to go through. But before I go on, I do want to thank the local councillors that I've worked with over the last few years in tackling some of these issues, particularly Councillor Tony Ball, former leader of Basildon Council, Phil Turner, another leader of Basildon Council, the leader of Thurrock Council, Rob Gledhill, and the chairman of the Policy and Resources Committee, Gavin Callaghan. Now, I accept that the travelling community face many challenges, as described in the various briefings that have been circulating, and that no one should be subject to hate speech or hate crime. But equally, it is reasonable that the settled community can expect the law to be applied even. As we heard, following the clearance of Dale Farm, which was a success, unfortunately both Basildon and Thurrock Council have been on the front line trying to tackle seemingly to be endless unauthorised encampments. Now in South Essex we have had, particularly in Thurrock, some success with the new uh, Conservative leader of Thurrock Council seen regularly at evictions where the police were robustly enforcing Section 61. Unfortunately he tells me that that was last year. This year there is a greater reluctance to enforce Section 61 and he suggests that one of the key reasons for that is that the guidance applied to the police has shifted the emphasis from being on ors, breaches, it could be this, that or the other, into ands, thus making it almost impossible, except in the most extreme cases, to apply Section 61. He also highlights one of the key problems that the, uh, when the legislation was uh, drafted, it didn't clarify how far an encampment would have to move. And so we end up with the ridiculous case of encampments moving, once they had been moved on, a very short distance and we start the whole process again. That really does need to be looked at. And I want that distance to be measured not in metres, but in miles. And finally, we need some change to the guidance on criminality before and during these encampments. At present, and perhaps rightly, you cannot apply collective responsibility to criminal damage as a group enter a site, whether that's the cutting of padlocks or the removing of gates. For there has to be an offence, there has to be an individual and evidence available. However, again, a simple change to the current legislation to amend the wording to say where criminal damage has occurred and unauthorised persons have entered public land, this would allow the police to act more quickly. In the same vein, we have to be realistic about what happens on these sites. Uh, the amount of environmental damage that is done. And so therefore, I think we need to look at how we can hold the collective responsible for the cleanup that often runs into many tens of thousands. Mr Deputy Speaker, we have tried, we have worked with the current legislation, we've engaged with the police, we've encouraged greater enforcement, we've worked with the Essex County Traveller Unit, we've used the courts, but quite frankly, it is not working. So while I accept the law is blind, the public are not. They want action and they want it now. And all I am trying to do is level the playing field. Therefore, not only do we need a few tweaks to the existing legislation, we also need a change in the law as identified by my honourable, right honourable friend. 
the member for Rayleigh and Whitford, calling for ministers to adopt the so-called Irish option of criminalising deliberate acts of trespass, such as those that we see frequently in South Essex, is a sensible move and has 100% of my backing. I do not believe it criminalises a way of life or is discriminatory. It criminalises an activity, unauthorised encampments and trespass. I look very much forward to hearing the minister's views on the tweaks and on the law change. Yeah. Mm.